God. It's so good to be fired up in the kingdom of God. I don't know where I would be without the kingdom. But you know what? Say what? Because y'all gave up your dream. Y'all gave up the worldly dream and focused on the kingdom dream. You listen to God's calling in your life. And you know what, guys? There's more Ron and Tracy's in here. You just got to believe in God. You just got to trust in God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. So sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son. Your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Moriah. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain. I will show you. You see, Abraham didn't go back and forth. Like, man, that's my only son, man. He didn't go back and forth. He's like, all right. So early the next morning, look at this. Abraham didn't go back and forth. He said, got up and loaded the donkey. His donkey, he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here. Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Now, you got to remember, Isaac means that he laughed because Abraham and Sarah laughed when they said they were going to have a baby. They were nine, Abraham was 99 years old when he asked to have a son. And I don't know how old was Sarah, but Sarah was way older. And we know about health issues, you know, different things. So, so Sarah's like, oh, I'm going to have a son. Oh, I'm really going to have a son. And Isaac, I, Isaac means he laughs. So I could imagine Isaac laughing and seeing no lamb. I, I just could imagine that. But Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He's like, ugh. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from him. Me, your son, on, your man. only son. Yeah. Come on, Jermaine. Wow, that's 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 something that we gotta believe here in South. I believe too many times, as for myself included, 
I, I grew up in Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground where I spent most of my days. Chilling out pool to the couple of guys, started out to no good. But I grew up in Philly, and growing up in growing up in those type of environments, you tend not to trust people yeah. because all you see is people. You tend not to love because all you see is the hurts and the past. I grew up with an abusive mother, and I mean sexual abuse. I grew up with, a, with her abusive boyfriends, they were prostitutes, she was a prostitute. You know, she, she hurted me every day. My my man. And, I, and I remember, I remember when she, she walked in, because she never believed me, right? She never believed that her, her uh, the, the boyfriends that she was having were rape, her, you know. But one day she walks in, she killed the guy that raped me right in front of my face. I had to stand in trial. I was five years old. I remember shaking. I like, and I was in, in my in my in my childlike nature. I'm like, yeah, she killed him. It was awesome. It was like an action movie. And then later on, my friend was like, why you do that? You put your mom in jail for almost 15 years. And I couldn't forgive myself. I share that with you say this. When I got in the kingdom, I lacked trust. I lacked faith in people. Yeah, I had daddy issues. I have mama issues. I got auntie issues, grandma <laughs> issues. I just don't got time to speak about them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but all those issues do come about. You know, I remember being married once and all those issues got right back in my face like, ah, whoa. <laughs> because I want to give the singles a challenge. Don't get married until you dealt with yourself with God. Come on. Don't get married a brother or sister until you dealt with God. Until you love God. Until you fall on your knees with God. Because getting married won't fix your problem. Yeah. Have, you know, let's be real here. Having sex won't have the problem because you're going to think about something that she didn't do the next day. Or the following day. You're going to think of something bad all the time. So if you want to get it straight, get your purity straight, then marry my sister. Get your purity, but get your purity of your brothers, then marry my brother. Yeah. Amen. Let God be, let, let, let you see God right now. Focus on God, singles. Focus. You know, I, 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 sorry, I got all crazy. Um, Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Uh, I wrote two lessons. There we go. Now I'm at the right lesson. The other, the other lesson got reviewed. Um, but um, but there's three but there's but there's three things that I, I want to talk about. Abraham trusted and he answered God. Yeah. He it, but the special part about it was that that it wasn't him that he was called that he was called. This the special part of the thing was that he answered the call. A lot of us here are called to do something, but we're just sitting down. Yeah. Waiting for a Bible talk leader to perform all miracles. Waiting for a Bible talk leader to fix our special missions. Waiting for a Bible talk to move, but expecting the Bible talk leader to do all the work. Right. You know what, guys? I, can I say something real quick? Go for it. Go ahead. You know what? You know what? 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 I'm with you, bro. You're a disciple. Come on. You have a Bible. Come on. You got called to be a disciple when you were baptized. Come on, man. Your job is to be a Bible talk leader. Your job is to be at the front lines when everybody's at the front lines. There's no more sitting back. I want to see all y'all there at 2.30 at leaders meeting. I want that leaders meeting to be sold out. I want everybody, I want to put more seats there. I want everybody to come to listen to Bible Talk Leaders Meeting today. Can everybody do that today? You know, can y'all make that schedule to come out to keep Bible Talk Leaders Meeting today? Have that faith. We're not the world. I don't got a Benz. I don't got a car. Come on, man. I, I'm, I'm going on the bus getting courtesy rides during special. I mean, rice and beans. Come on, rice and beans. I don't got nothing to do. Rice and beans is plastic. If it stands out in the sun long enough, it's going to melt to my skin. <laughs> Jesus. Do you want to be like Jesus? Yeah. Do you want to be like Jesus? Yeah. All right.
traffic then flow, follow me down to this yellow brick road of being that leaders meeting at 2 30. You know, sometimes when God calls, it looks foolish. You know, when God calls you to do special missions, it looks foolish because you got the you got a phone bill due the next day, right? Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But check this out. I had a phone bill due the next day. Guess what? They waved the, they waved the phone bill. And you know what? Amen. Um, you know what? God, God, God allowed me to give more than I was expected to give. You know? Because I, I, I believe in all my heart, I've been in the kingdom for 17 years. And I've seen the kingdom move. And I've seen the kingdom move. And I've seen the kingdom move. And I sometimes I used to sit down. I'd be like playing on my phone, watching, trying to flirt with a sister. I'm like, it's not working out. I'm like, why's it not working out? Because I wasn't doing it God's way. Yeah. Why, why did it work out? Because I wasn't doing it God's way. I didn't have faith. See, when you do stuff the worldly way, you're going to get worldly results. Yeah. When people ask about what happened to your marriage, I got a world, I had a worldly view and I had a worldly result. You know, that's what happened. When you, when you focus on doing something worldly, you're going to get worldly results. But like Abraham here, he was faithful. And he got faithful results. Come on, bro. Abraham became the father of all nations. His sons was Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. They were faithful. They were radical dudes. We got to start, brothers, we got to start being fathers to the, to the team. Yeah. We got to start inviting people over to our houses, loving up on them, be showing them how to be men. There's no more sitting back and criticizing that brother and criticizing that sister. No, you want to criticize that sister? Teach her how to dress. Show her how to love. Show her how to be a woman. Show her how to raise up. We need more mothers in the faith now. We need more fathers in the faith. It's so ridiculous. We need more men and women to stand up for faith and sit down and be humble and stand up and take faith and move forward. No more pushing back. Like, I can't do it. Oh, my goodness. They're going to hurt me. You know what? I'm going to hurt you, too. And you know what? Everybody here is going to hurt you. You know why? Because we all have sin. That's why we all have discipleship partners. That's why we all say the Bible with each other. Because we're, we're maniacs without God. We're insane. Look at me. I'm crazy. Come on, Come on. I love you, You know? I'm trying to push the mic back, so I won't. Um, but we're, we're called to serve. You know, it's funny. It's funny. We're called to serve, right? Some people would like raise your hand to, to, to be a song leader, but when you ask for kids came to work, they're like, oh. Oh. you know, I'm single for a reason. I don't want to have kids. You know that, bro? I'm like, I'm glad you told me. But 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 let me let me help, but let me help you let me help you out with something. Let me help you out with something. If you can't be the best kids came to work you can be, you can't be the best Bible talk leader. Can be. kids that are not yours? If how, how can I trust you with, with a Bible talk if you're not going to love God's kids? Yeah. You mean to tell me you're going to try to, you can't love the other children's kids, but you're going to try to love God's kids? Yeah. Bible talk takes a lot of work. Yeah. you got to serve. you got to you got to call people and expect that sometimes they won't call you back. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes it's like changing diapers. You know why? You know why it's like changing diapers? Because you're there 24-7 to help them through their struggle. You're not just having a title. You're calling. You're calling at 2 a.m. praying with that brother. Yes. You're calling. You're having a prayer night. You're like, hey, bro, let's hang out. You're helping them to stay out of the way because you know what it was like for you yeah. when you were alone. Yeah. I don't want to see nobody alone. Nobody alone is coming to love. The brother's household, we're going to have a barbecue every Saturday. Yeah. have fun, but we're praying that men and women will come out and really to study the Bible. Because see, I learned something being in South Central. Everybody loves to party. Right. <laughs> everybody loves to hang out. Yeah. And everybody, you know, and everybody loves Calvinists, supposedly, I guess. But, but, but let me help you out here. Let me help you out here. What are you going to do for your Bible talk to be fruitful? Come on. Are you going to sacrifice not, you know, because some of us, we can have that workaholic mentality. Just work, 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 work. Oh, you're not fruitful? Oh, get away from me, bro. Uh, 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 okay. I'm going to focus on this person. No, focus on everybody. I mean, not focus on everybody, but focus on a few that need your love. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Focus on them. Help them build faith. I, I you know, I, I love you guys so much. Um, when, when, I, when, I, when I came to Southland, like 2014, I was, I was like broke than a, than a broke than, I was broke than a homeless guy on the street. Come on. Um, and uh, I got here, and uh, Corey was here. He's like, bro, you gonna be a ball talk later? I'm like, <laughs> you don't know me too well. Did you talk to Chris Lopez? I almost punched some people in the face. No, bro. <laughs> you know, um, bro. He, he, he sat down with me like, bro, you don't know what you have. You forgot what you have. I want to help you be a Bible talker. It takes faith. That's all it is. Do you have faith today? Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, I, amen. And you know, ever since uh, Corey called me to be a Bible talk leader, I've been a Bible talk leader. I've been a high church leader. And I've seen, seen flaws in my face. I, I, sometimes I fall on my face because I, I was like, I fall on my face sometimes because I know that it takes a lot of love. And I never had that love before, you know? And then when I give it out and then it gets rejected, and I'm like, oh, I gotta give it again, and again, and again, and again. I'm like, all right, God, I see how you're doing. You know what I'm like, all right. You want know, me to trust in you, I, I gotcha. I'm right here, I'm right here. I, I got what you're doing. But see, if you know what God calls you to be, just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Come on. God called, you know what's funny about this? I I know, and many of you know, I have trouble with women, right? I have women issues, right? But why does God always put a Bible talk full of women around me? So I can know how to love women. Yeah. Come on, Come on man. Hey. So I can know how to know how to protect the sisters so I can know how to lead the way in protecting the sisters if I want to do if I want to be evangelist I gotta protect the sisters right, right. Come on, yeah. amen so and the second point is going to be short and brief I promise um, on, this awesome. you're he, uh, I, I didn't have time to get there but when he first when Abraham first got called he was in the land of here it was a fairy destruction right so God guess what God called him to do Leave that fairy destruction. To leave that sin life. Fury means fairy destruction. The land of fury. Southland, you know, we, we see South Central, we see Compton, we see Watts. You know, it's just the land of fury. Fire, fire burning up. People hating one another. People calling them racist names. People not respecting women. Single moms leaving by themselves to take care of their kids. God calls us to be examples in Southland. Yeah. He chose you to be example in Southland. Aren't you fired up to do that? Yeah. He, he, he's calling you to be a Bible talk leader in Boston. He's calling you to be a Bible talk leader in Compton. He's calling you to do incredible things. But you have to answer the call. You, got, you can't just dream it. You got to do it. That's why I call my house church a dream team. Because if a church is not a dream, there's no vision. Yeah. If you don't have a dream to evangelize the world, there's no vision. Yeah. I can't wait to see one day where this, where we build so much house churches and the room is packed. And I see, and I, I, and I see Alicia becoming a Bible talk leader. I see Aaron becoming a Bible talk leader. I see Calvin becoming a Bible talk leader. You know, I, I see so many people that can do incredible things. But you first, what you got to do, you got to answer the call. Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna leave you here. I wanna. I wanna. Leave. I'm sorry. I, can I be real for a minute? Be real, brother. I, I, I was nervous preaching in front of you guys because I love Ron and Tracy. And I want to make sure that I I, I I respect this pulpit in front of me. You know. So I, 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 I really love you guys, man. Come on, Jay. Come on, We love you too, bro. But you know what? I never seen God. But I know he's here. I never seen heaven, but I know it's there. We come to church, we give our tithes. We come to church, we sit down. We come to church, we give a hug, we give a high five. But do you have faith in the brother that you see next to you? Do you have faith in that sister that's giving you, that you call a hard time? Do you have faith in your wife? The one that you looked at when you got married and said, I love you. Come on, Jay. Part. 
Do you have faith in your husband? Yeah, he might screw up sometimes. That's that's us men. We, we, we make mistakes, man. Come on, bro. I, I'm on, a bro. jack of all trades. I, I make all types of mistakes. I've been in single ministry, campus ministry, team ministry, a little bit of married ministry. I, I tell you, we make mistakes. Keep it real. But 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 as as sisters, y'all y'all got the power. Y'all don't realize it, but y'all got the power. Y'all got the juice. <laughs> did you know? Did you know that Deborah? Did you know that Deborah called Barack to, to, to lead the to, to lead the way? Did you know that sisters, you can encourage your brothers to be a powerful leader? Did you know that you can write an encouragement card and it can change his day? Did you know that if you just bake him some cookies sometimes, that maybe he'll stop being his dad? Or do you just or do you just complain about it? Wish that your leader, wish that your Bible talk leader changed. Oh, I wish I have my husband that will lead a Bible talk. But sister, if you can't encourage the brother that you don't like, or how can you encourage the husband that you do like? I'm only speaking from experience. So the challenge is. My challenge is for Southland. My challenge for Southland. No complaint. We have faith in each other. Come on, Dre. Some of us got daddy issues, and we're going to focus on our daddy issues and give it to God, our glory and Father. Who knows my dad for a part of the spiritual life? Don't focus on the physical, focus on the eternal. Another thing, some of us don't know how to be a mom. You be an incredible mom to the sisters. You, your, your awesome and wonderful family, Invite a sister over and a brother over and teach them how to live as a single and a single single brother and a single sister. Teach them. Don't, don't complain about them. Teach them. Teach them how to dress. I didn't know how to dress. Michael Wilson had to teach me this. Oh man, I had a lot of work to do. Um, but I, but I just want to challenge us. This is the summer of love. Let's go out there and love each other. If we can't love each other here, how are we going to expect to love the lost? we got to welcome people in. I'm so happy that Ana Kays are here. Woo! I was in my restoration study. He could tell you, I was a maniac. But he knows how to love deep. i never seen him lack love in people. i never seen him lack belief in people. He knows how to love deeply, and I appreciate you guys being here. And um, I, I guess Bergen knows how to do it, too, because you follow the husband, so you know how to love. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I really appreciate this. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to preach to you guys. I, I pray that I pray that y'all got something from it, and I pray y'all take the challenges on. I love you guys. Come on, Jay! All right, come on, Jay. Let's open our Bibles to Mark nine. Okay. Boom. Mark nine, verse fourteen. You know, in the Christian life, there's always uh, ups and valleys. Our emotions can play with us. Yep. And if we, if we focus on our emotions and we base our spiritual life off of our emotions, we'll be a wreck. Come on, bro. Preach it. You know, since power comes from faith, you know, our emotions are pushed to the side. And we have to sometimes look past our emotions. We'll always look past our emotions. Yep. Sometimes they line up with faith. Other times they don't. But we see here, that we're going to, uh, my part of the lesson, I'm going to talk about power coming from faith. But if there's no faith, there's no power. Come on, bro. Life. If there's no power, there's no miracles in our life. Oh. If there's no miracles, it's because we're not praying in our life. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah, but if, there, if we are full of faith, we have God's power in our life. Yeah. He uses us to make miracles. Okay. And our prayer life is on fire. And that's one thing we can really look at, that our power comes from faith. We're going to take a look at the disciples here in Mark 9, verse 14. All right, come on, James. It says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people 
saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing about? He asked. And here they are, they're out there arguing. Disciples, like, Jesus come back, they're arguing. Right, right come on. <laughs> A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I bought my son to you. I bought my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has been robbed rob him from the speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes at the teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Wow. You know, sometimes you have those Bible studies that are like that. You know, Man. Like, hey, something, something's, something's wrong. You know? Right. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. You know, that's also how some Bible studies are. You know, you, you see him squirm and a little bit. You know, you start reading the Bible and you're like, ooh, yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not, oh my goodness. You have a little bit of convulsion. Uh-oh. Uh, he fell to the ground and rolled to the ground, foam to the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If I can, Jesus asked. Jesus, I said Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, oh yeah. I do believe. Help me overcome my belief. Come on. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. All right, James. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked much like a, so much like a corpse that they said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to the feet and stood by him. After Jesus had gone indoors, the disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? Wow. He replied, this kind, this can only come out by prayer. You know, we think about having power, and when it comes down to powerful prayers, you know, that's, that's, that's one thing that we really need to look at. But we're going to start right up here at the, at the top of uh, in, in verse 14. Come on, I, was, yeah. I was reading this and it says, when they came to the other disciples, and I was like, wait a minute, when they came, who, who, who is this? So it's important, this is very important because it's not, things are just not just thrown in the Bible for, you know, uh, just by chance. Come on, bro. But it says, uh, uh, when, when you look up in verse, in uh, chapter 1, or in, in verse 2 here, it says, after, uh, after six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John with him, and they uh, led him up to a high mountain. So Peter, James, and John, they were at, with Jesus at, at you know, the transfiguration. you got to go read on that. That's a whole other lesson. Right. And so basically, those were the three leaders. Wow. Of the if you think about the 12 apostles, Peter, James, and John were the leaders. Wow. And Jesus. So you think about it, uh, you know, uh, the leaders were gone. And the rest of them could not drive out demons. Oh, uh, come on, bro. But one thing, they had the same exact Holy Spirit that the leaders had. Yeah. But sometimes we can doubt. You know, we get into, what well, why can't I do this? We, we start looking at what we're not doing and what we can do. Come when on, we bro. have the same power, you know, uh, that, that, you know, resurrected Jesus from the dead, we receive it at, you know, at baptism, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Come on, bro. we got to realize that we have the same power. And when the leaders are gone... The same power that they have, we have. Come on, that's great. You know, just imagine in our church, you know, Ron and house church leaders are gone. And it's just the Bible talk leaders. Or just you, a member of the Bible talk. And you, you can't and you feel like you can't drive it out. But that's not how it is. You know, Jesus basically he says, hey, it comes out by prayer. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. Said so they saw a large crowd gathered around in verse 14. Right. Uh, the teachers of the law arguing with them. So now, okay, now we're going to look at another issue. Yeah. The arguing. Yeah. So we have the nine disciples. The leaders are gone, and the nine disciples are arguing their way through a Bible study. Wow. <laughs> they, you know, they get maybe they get in a religious debate. Maybe they're you know oh baptism oh maybe the Holy Spirit maybe you know they're tit for tat and trying, arguing over words and not being effective with the scriptures. Yeah. When we're arguing, here's one thing I want you to think about. When we're arguing, 
which fruit of the spirit are we using? You know, it, 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 we're, we're not using love. We're not using joy, peace, patience, kindness. It's actually no love, no joy, no peace, no patience, no kindness. Right. No self-control, no faithfulness. Right. We've got to make sure that when we are sitting down in a Bible study or sitting down trying to teach someone or sitting down at home with our husbands, with our wives, uh -huh. sitting in yeah. our, with our roommates, sitting at work, that we're not arguing. Because whenever we, we get into arguments, Come on, bro. Satan, you know, we become Satan's puppeteer. Right you know, Pinocchio, or what's his name? Geppetto, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're arguing, you're working for, working for Satan. Oh. Wow. Wonder why we can't drive out demons? Because the demons has already drove the Holy Spirit out of us. Oh. When something goes wrong, it's your first instinct to argue. Is it just because it's not my way, do I hit the argue button? When we have to love, joy, pay, pe uh, peace, patience, kindness, or when we set that lose self-control button, it's the first button that we reach yeah. when something goes wrong. Yeah. We always choose an emotion when something doesn't go our way. Which one are you choosing? Is it one of the fruit of the spirit? Is it part? Is it the whole fruit of the spirit? Let me get that right because it's not the fruits. It is the fruit of the spirit. Or are we choosing the act of the sinful nature? Come on. Are we able to teach? Or is our anger our first thing that goes? Let me get to you. Uh, arguing at home, arguing with family members, arguing, we've got to make sure that we rid all that so that we can be effective in our Bible study. Because we may argue over here, take that demon to the Bible study, and uh, wonder why it's not working. Come on. Okay. And we've got to look at our whole life. Our life and doctrine on how we're living. Not just sitting all good, you know, in front of somebody with the Bible, but how we're living, you know, behind closed doors when the leaders can't watch. Let's go. Point number one: is being prepared gives you faith. Turn, turn to First Peter three, verse fifteen. All right. I'm gonna get there quick. So I don't have much time, but it says, "But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to, to everyone who asks you the reason for the hope that you give." But do this with gentleness and respect. You know, here the apostles, they were out there arguing. They weren't being gentle. It wasn't respectful. We've got to make sure that we are not people who are arguing. We've got to be gentle and respect as we teach and admonish people. Yeah. You know, and the first principles. You know, we have a first principle study that's amazing. Amen? Yeah. It really helps us. It's just basic teachings about Christ. And, you know, maybe we're not getting in Bible studies because we don't understand it. Because we're not prepared to give an answer. Because maybe we're afraid of the answer that we give. Because, but maybe you know, there's a lack of confidence there. Because we need, you know, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus to come do it for us. Wow. But we got to make sure that we are preparing ourselves in our own time so that we can lead the first principle studies to, right. you know, to help people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Come on, James. You know, let them become your convictions. You know, not... not, not Princeton's convictions. Uh -oh. Princeton said to do this in the Bible. Uh -oh. Ron said to do this. No, let's, let's let the scriptures move people's hearts. Let's let the scriptures move our hearts. Let the scriptures become powerful in our lives. Amen? Come on, James. And it's not just good to teach the, you know, being able to teach the scriptures. We have to teach the scriptures convincing. And if you're timid because you haven't really got in there, you're, you're not going to be convincing. You know, I, I have a, I'm not, uh, there's a member in my family, I almost gave, him, gave his name out, but <laughs> a member in my family, we have a saying, if he's talking, if, if his lips are moving, he's lying. Oh. It, it's just, the whole family knows, if his lips are moving, he's lying. Dang. We love, him, you know what I mean? His lips are moving. Dang. You got to watch him. Right. Preach that, but bro. this dude is so convincing. What? He talked to everybody. They're like, That's "Wow!" Down. And I'm sitting over like, <laughs> and, and, and he convinces people of so much. You know, just like the world convinces you. Oh, you drink Budweiser, you're gonna have girls and guys like this around you. You're gonna be happy, and they forget what it looks like down there on the bed. Right. They forget to show you what it really leads to. But the lies that the world teach are very convincing. But when we teach the truth, we need to be convincing. Just like Come on, James. My Preach it. You know, it's, it's really neat. I, I, it had been a few years since I saw him, and we had a little family reunion, and I was like, what's up, man? How are you doing, man? 
and I knew he had just gotten out of prison. That's where Lion oh, gets you. No. Yeah. And I, I, I said, how are you doing? You know, it's been a while, man. What's going on? He said, just got back from Iraq. Baghdad. <laughs> I didn't argue. I didn't argue. Oh, that's hey, man. Hurt. I love you, man. Nothing. See you later. Hey, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. And I was like, man. You know, we hadn't seen each other in 10 years. The first thing that comes out is a super convincing lie. But since I knew the truth, I wasn't duped. Yeah. Amen. If we know the scriptures, people can come with whatever they want, and we're not going to be duped by the lies of the world. Amen? Yeah. Let's get back to the scripture in verse 15. It says, as soon uh, let's get back to Mark. Come on. Come on, bro. Mark Matthew says, As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. So the leaders come back, everybody's dragging these people to the lead. You know, and, and right here, Jesus, he, he was like, Man, this is a, how long shall I put up with How long? You know, we, we need to be men and women who can really remove demons from people with the scripture. All right. You know, We've got, to, we've got to be men and women who understand the scriptures and are able to use them effectively and convincingly. Oh, good. What are you arguing about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I bought my son. Uh, I, or, a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I bought my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth and gnashes of the teeth and becomes rigid. I asked the disciples to drive him out, but they could not. Bring the boy to me. He'll jump on down there. So they brought the boy to Jesus, and he was able to do it. Later on, like, as we read earlier, that he was able to drive. He told them that it comes out by prayer. Yeah. You know, getting back to the first principle. Reading, praying, understanding our scriptures. You know, uh, some of us, by now, we should feel confident in the scriptures. We, you know, been around for a minute or two. I mean, and it, it's not like you can't take three weeks and just listen to the studies every day online. We've got apps for everything now. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Thank God for apps. You know, God, he was like, well, I need to get the, the word out in this generation. We're getting more people, more and more people. All right, let me make them smart enough to create an app to help. Amen. Hey, God ain't gonna have so many ways to help. But some of us should be very confident in, in things now. But so if, if say we, we went to our friend's house and they had a six-year-old kid, uh, a six-year-old boy in a crib, you know, and, and he, he's got a diaper on, he's drinking milk out of a bottle. He's six years old. And you're like, hmm. you know, I mean, he's I mean, special needs. Hmm. There's something wrong, you know. You, you have to help him get dressed. You have to fix his food for him. Help him, you know. His, the conversations with him are very simple. Right. You just keep them basic because he, he doesn't understand that much. You got to get him on the little bus. Uh -oh. You know, just get, you know, get him to the bus and come on. Be there to pick him up. Just hands on everything. He's slow, but we love him. You know, we, we love him. Yeah. You don't just cast him out because of the child with special needs. You got to make sure that he doesn't get into everything. But, and then I, I look around, and I was looking at the church, and y'all ever heard of a special needs Christian? Oh. Oh. Somebody who you just got to... You gotta walk them everywhere. I mean, we have the same Bible, we have the same everything, but some of us choose to be six years old in the crib with the bottle, with everybody walking you through every single thing. Oh. It's a choice that we make. It's a choice. We can either thrive or we can be a special needs Christian. Come on, bro, preach that. Yeah, we love you. We ain't gonna put you out. But come on! Let's go! We're right, still gonna try to help change your diaper. Yeah. We're gonna get your milk for you. Uh, we, 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 but we're gonna one day, you know, let's since go. it's a choice, Give let's snap out of it. Amen? Let's go! We don't have to be there. The bottle there. Come on, James. You know, now that special missions are over, it, it's, it's so awesome. You know, you know last week we announced the, the two by one minute. Let me back that up. 
now that we gave enough. Come on. And, you know, and we, and we can handle special missions. I'm sure we all gave enough. Right? Come on, Jay. We gave $200. We knocked that out. Come on, Jay. We knocked that out. We knocked that out. So, you know, we, you know, we, we have our, our new Summer of Love campaign. Amen. Well, you know, the Summer of Love campaign is where we're going to show our love to, to, to the non-Christians and to the Christians, to each other. You know, and one of our goals is our Bible talk. It's for every Bible talk to be abundantly fruitful. All right, come on. You know, I mean, you know, let's start off by being fruitful once a month. You know, just once a month. You know, we can do it. Somebody grab a study. We'll get in that and we'll really help people become Christians and change their lives. Amen? Amen. You know, then we can prove, you know, that, that we, we prove what kind of Christian we really are, right? Right. You know, we can be the strong Christian or we can be, you know, you know. Oh, you know, we, we got a choice. It's a choice, amen? Come on, brother. Uh, our goal you know, for every Bible talk is to be proof. We have to get everybody in Bible studies. If you're not in a Bible study, if you don't know where they are in your group, you need to be asking. And actually, you need to be like the, don't be like the nine in this, in this uh, 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 parable, or in this passage right here, where they, you know, where everybody was gone, they weren't able to make things happen. Let's be the ones like, wait a minute, I'm gonna, I've learned enough. I've, I've seen what, what my leaders have done in the past. Yeah. I see what the leaders are doing. Let me imitate. Amen? Amen. Come on, James. You know, get everybody in study. So that we can have a strong church. We need to make a strong church. And the way our church is going to be strong is by staying in the studies. Yep. Yeah. All right, so, uh, you know, one thing, uh, let me show you some symptoms of a special need, Chris. Okay. You know, you know, let me let me help you out. All right. They, they don't think that midweek is for them. Oh. They, you know, but they're like, well, you know, I, I, I'll oh. be all right. But then they struggle throughout the week, and they're wondering why. And they come, the diaper is dirty, and you're like, oh, okay, let me change it. But you know, all right, you know, yes. we have we have bathrooms now. You, 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 let me show you. you walk into the bathroom and show. Damn. They don't think that they, come on, bro. Yeah. Uh, some of the things they they avoid. All, you know, they avoid getting in the Bible. They avoid sharing their faith. You know, let's not be that. Amen? Right. Come on, Jerry. Let's be the, the Christian who sets our lifestyle around the kingdom. Amen? Amen. You know, AMS have, has open mic nights on Friday night. Woo! Grab a date and go visit AMS. We, you know, our kingdom is, 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 is worldwide. Yeah. But the more we fellowship with people outside of our, our, our region and in the other regions, the, the deeper our bonds become. Amen? All right, come on, bro. Um, GLC, the Global Leadership Conference. Hey, if you're planning on going to the Global Leadership Conference, just go ahead and give it up for that. Let's get the registrations in. If we need to get registered as soon as possible. Amen? Keychain. A special, uh, 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 a special needs Christian has no clue what the calendar is. Wow. He has no clue. Because you just have to... All right. You take him to the bus. You take him everywhere. Right. You, all right. You, you, you just, you, and then, and then you got to, you know, somebody got to watch him for the rest of his life. You went there. You know, but we, we got to make sure that we're not like that, you know. We love him. Don't yeah. say, you know, I'm not Come on, Jay. We do love him. I'm not saying that. Come on, bro. But we need to make sure the that we're not him. Let's go, bro. Right, I'm going to sprint through this last little part. I've got three minutes. Come All on, right, come on. Let's, you know, let's get back to the scripture. Uh. Immediately, in verse 24, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my belief. How do we overcome our belief? With uh, In Romans 10, 17, it says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. Okay. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. we got to make sure that we're building our faith by listening to the message. All right. Yeah. Come on, Dan. By our private time. Right. Getting in the scriptures. Yeah. Getting in there. Understanding what it says. Yeah. And then immediately right after, in verse 25, Jesus, he showed them his message. He showed them live. He says, when Jesus saw the crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. And uh, you deaf, mute, you deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. Right. When you do your Bible studies and you see a scripture that's going after you, you can tell that to yourself. Or, we, or do we need somebody else to tell it to us? 
Do we wait for that discipleship time that we avoid? For somebody to tell us that. And in our Bible studies, we need to uh, preach with authority. Yeah. Men and women who have the same authority that Jesus had. Right here. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse. Many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood. These are how our Bible studies should be. When people go through them, they should, be like, they should rise. It was so amazing seeing to hear it, you know, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And just seeing all the people who have just recently been baptized, it's like, man, you know, there's so much change yeah. in everybody's life. After Jesus had gone indoors, the, the disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive that? He replied, This can only come out without prayer. Like I said earlier, Jesus had already given them the authority. The main lesson of this, this uh, miracle is, to, is the power of faith to overcome our challenges in life and to help others do the same thing. We got to make sure that we that we realize that our power come on, bro. comes from faith. Yep. It doesn't come from us uh -huh. or our job. Or our bank accounts. Come on, James. Or Shoot. how cool we look. Okay. Or how many lies we can tell. Come on, Joseph. Or how we can argue somebody. The louder I get, the righter I am. Oh man. <laughs> our power comes from faith. Ooh. Why had the other nines failed? The symptoms that the symptoms that appeared that they were arguing, and they depended on their leaders to do the work. Maybe the absence of their Lord taking the, the three other disciples with them and leaving them had dampened their spiritual uh, spirits and diminished them. Maybe you know, somebody that left to Chicago has dampened your spirit. Maybe somebody who went on some mission team has dampened your spirit and you're sitting there waiting for somebody to ride, help, help you ride. I pray like, uh, like Kamani said, I, I hope that today somebody walks with you, that you walk away here saying today was the day that I changed. Yeah. Yeah. Today is the yeah. day that I'm going to make a difference. Today is the day that I'm going to stop being a special needs Christian. <laughs> you, know, you know, because with Operation Eagle that we're doing, there's going to be people going here and there, and, and you're going to have to be the one to really hold their hands yeah. and get them money. But those were the symptoms, but what it really comes down to is because they had been careless in their, in their uh, personal spiritual walk and neglected prayer. Yeah. It's the reason why they were not able to drive out the demon. Come on. Come on. You know, I'm not coming with any new teaching. This is nothing new. Yeah. This is something that you heard in the study that you, you that you know. Yeah. Right. Come on, Dane. It's, it's the same message of reading your Bible, eagerly examining the scripture every yeah. day. You know, and I think eagerly examine, like the, the monkeys, you see how he... <laughs> oh. Hey. Uh, when he's picking through other monkeys, he's oh, really looking for whatever they look for in their head. Yeah. Eagerly examine. <laughs> we do that every day. And pray yeah. multiple times a day. Yeah. That's where we, you know, we do pray for our dinner and we think that's the one for the day. <laughs> we need to pray multiple times a day. The authority that Jesus had given them was only effective if they exercised by faith. And faith must, faith must be activated through spiritual discipline and devotion. And to God be glory. Come on, Jay!